And we're live, just taking a moment to load to actually see that we're up. Because today I already went into the group to welcome everyone to the summit. We did a little bit of an introduction video and it's your time right now to also introduce yourself. So tell us where you're from, where you live and why, you're re why you are joining the summit. So what you really envision for your career as an international yoga teacher. And we're kicking off the summit with Kelly, with Kelly McGew from the Digital Yoga Academy and speak about why your future as an international yoga teacher is online. So Kelly, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Annie. I'm so honored to be here with you today and to help you kick off this summit. Yeah, exciting. I'm really, really excited about it. For those that know me, they also know that I've been working for you, with you for probably the last three years or so. And really everything that I've achieved in my business is because of you. I really wouldn't have been able to do it alone. So I'm really grateful for your work. And I think that everyone here can benefit from your knowledge and get some really great insights into what, to really, what it really takes to create your business and to set it up. So could you tell everyone a little bit about what you do and what you're doing it for? Yeah, sure. So my name is Kelly McHugh. I'm the founder of Digital Yoga Academy and Digital Yoga Academy is an online school, an online academy for yoga teachers who want to learn about growing a business online and how to market themselves. And I've been running this business now for the last five years. Mm -hmm. um, we have supported thousands and thousands of teachers all around the world to um, gain the right knowledge and tools to set themselves up online and to grow their communities and to create online offerings that that sell ultimately. So uh, it's really about, um, you know, providing or showing that there's another way that mm -hmm. isn't the kind of traditional route of going straight into a studio once you've done your yoga teacher training. So this is really about taking ownership and, you know, building your own business and doing things on your terms um, so that you can have that freedom and more income and, and flexibility. And of course, we know that many teachers, you know, who do go down the studio route end up teaching a lot of classes to be able to pay their bills at the end of at mm -hmm. the end of the month so really you know an online uh, business allows you to um, yeah to provide yourself with the right income for you know sharing what it is that you love which of course is yoga mm -hmm. exactly you've already mentioned so many really great benefits of being your own boss to have your own business um, already touched a little bit about how you can do this online, but let's just start with the first question. Why really is it that the future of international yoga teachers is online? Mm, it's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess I did touch on it a little bit, but it's about, you know, taking your business into your hands and giving you an opportunity to really build the foundation so that you can create your own community um so we really saw this didn't we with covid you know the the pandemic forcing many teach forcing the majority of teachers <laughs> online you know yoga studios around the world closed and those teachers who had already started to take the first steps and get themselves online you know were obviously in a better position um and there was this huge influx of teachers kind of turning to the online space and really looking at platforms like instagram and you know mm -hmm. zoom and how they could then start to um, serve their communities and serve their students so we we saw the impact of that i mean I if you kind of rewind back you'll remember you know opening up instagram and all of the the lives at the top of the screen where you your yoga teacher friends you know getting onto onto the gram and and sharing yoga so it really has the opportunity to um for you to be able to reach people all around the world with with your message and you know we know as as yoga teachers you know why are we why are we yoga teachers why did we 
come to this career path in the first place? And of course, the answer is always because we want to we want to share yoga and want to create impact in people's lives. And so, you know, being able to build a community online actually means you can reach more people with your message. You know, of course, it takes work and we'll talk about that. But the opportunity to share more yoga with more people around the world is really there and it really is an opportunity and so you know that's kind of if I go back to my purpose and of course we always need to be coming back to our purpose but if I go back to my purpose you know having yoga in my life for such a long time being a yoga teacher myself and going down that path myself like I know that how important it was to me or it is to me in to be able to share yoga and so you know, I often talk about listening to the chapters of your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many of my chapters were in marketing, you know, that's what I did before I became a yoga teacher. Um, being in marketing in that high pressure job is actually what led me to yoga, you know, in my own practice. And so, you know, seeing my kind of like marketing background and my love for yoga come together, I know now that, you know, my mission, my purpose is to be able to support yoga teachers to have the right tools so that they can go out there and share more yoga around the world. And so it really is about this kind of knock on effect of impact. You know, it's like a ripple effect of impact that we can create together. And, you know, the world is online, right? The world is online. Um, not everybody has a yoga studio on their on their doorsteps, you know, like even now, of course, yoga studios have opened up, but not everyone has access to that. And so we have this opportunity to really use this platform, these platforms that are at our fingertips and really share yoga. And, and that's ultimately, you know, what yoga is about, isn't it? It's about bringing people together. It's about union. It's about creating impact in, in our lives and changing our lives. Mm -hmm. exactly this is beautiful <laughs> it really is beautiful and I think like you said as well at the beginning it gives you so much freedom because one of the purposes as well of being an international teacher is this freedom to just travel and travel or teach where you are maybe travel on the uh, teach on the road and mm -hmm. also online because when you're online you can actually gather those people together in the place that you are as well so take us a little bit through the steps of creating your own business or maybe your online presence to attract the people that you want to teach in the future. Yeah, I think, you know, ultimately it starts with you, you know, it starts with you. So you really doing the work to understand like what it is that you have to offer with people mm -hmm. and why are people going to come to you as their teacher of course we know you know there's thousands of teachers out there and <clears throat> some might see the space as saturated but actually you know there's um millions of people who are yet to discover yoga and so you know, it's really up to you to look at what you bring to that space, like what makes you unique and what it is, what is it that you want to share? And so what I find, you know, working with teachers and when we look at niching and we can talk about mm -hmm. this, but when we look at niching and really understanding what the problem is that you solve, nine times out of 10, it's, you know, the teacher is, drawing upon their own experience. So what does their life journey look like? What have they been through themselves? Like what are the challenges they have faced? And yeah, nine times out of 10, that's what they then go on to teach other people to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most of the time, you know, you'll be teaching someone something that you've been through yourself and, you know, now you're a few steps ahead. So I think it's really important to start in this place. And there's a, a lot of resistance that comes up with niching. You know, it's one of those mm -hmm. topics that you hear the word and it's like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> niching, I don't want to do that. Um, but really, really all it is, is asking the question, what is the problem that I solve? 
how can I help people? That's really what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not, I'm going to teach beginners yoga. That's not what it is. Like, how can you go down a little bit deeper? How can you shed some more layers to really understand how are you showing up to help people? And so when you're just starting out, you don't have all of that kind of feedback from a community because you're still building a community, you're starting from zero. And so the best place to start is from within. You know, what's inside here? What is inside here that you are passionate about sharing with the world? What is your story? You know, what have you been through yourself? And that might not be the thing that you're teaching a year from now or three years from now, but it's a really good place to start. You know, we have to start somewhere, you know, otherwise we stay stuck. Oh, is that the right decision? Is that what I should be doing? I'm not sure. I'm just not going to take any action. That is not the way to do it. We need to take action so that we can start getting feedback and getting insight from a community that starts to build up around us and things can evolve, but it's always the place to start is with yourself. You know, what is it that I want to show up and actually feel comfortable about sharing online? You know, what could I open my phone up onto Instagram and, you know, share for 10, 15 minutes, some mm -hmm. educational content around something, some topics, what are those topics? And so there's a whole piece of work that needs to be done around finding your niche. Actually, I don't like to say finding, I like to say deciding, deciding mm -hmm. on your niche. There's a piece of work that needs to be done there. And ultimately it is the problem that you solve how can you solve someone's problem you know that is what business is you know that's what business is business is about solving problems so you know if you don't know the problem you solve then you're not going to know how to communicate mm -hmm. and marketing again we complicate these things we complicate niching we complicate marketing marketing is simply how you communicate the problem that you solve that's it really how you communicate it and so if we don't know the problem we solve we can't communicate anything and so what happens is we end up saying come to my yoga class on Saturday morning at 10 a.m and we don't know what else to say because we haven't done the work to go a bit deeper so this is a really important step you know if we don't start doing this work we can't market ourselves. We can't create offerings. You know, it just becomes very general, very wishy-washy. We have the same voice as all of the other thousands of yoga teachers out there. And nothing cuts through that noise. You know, the online space is a busy space. We need to be working to get our message through that space. And simply when you niche down and you know who you're serving, then you start to get your message to, to land on the ears of the right people. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. And it's, I really think it's good for people to reflect on what really a niche means because there's so much misconception of it. And I think, like you said, so many people are so scared to choose one because they're afraid that maybe they're excluding people or then suddenly yoga is not, or their yoga classes are not for everyone anymore, but it's so necessary. I remember, and I think this is about five years ago when you maybe started out being online as well, downloading a list of a lot of niche ideas. Do you remember you wrote yes. that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what yeah. I called it, but it, but it was one of my freebies. Yes, it was. Yeah, it had some <laughs> niche name. I don't know what it was, but yeah, you're totally right. It did. It had all these combinations, didn't it? Exactly. Of the type, it was the type of person so whether that's a mother, a runner, a singer, like who are they? And then it was the problems. So, you know, the best niche is trying to mix, is trying to bring together the type of person with the problem that they're, that they have. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that's, you're right. <laughs> have that. Maybe I need to reinvent that. Yeah, it was very useful to just orientate yourself because at that time, I really didn't feel ready to choose a niche, mm -hmm. and it really gave me some ideas to work with. The niche that I'm working with right now was not on there. I remember that along the way as well, but, but because of what you're saying, to do that inner work and understanding what you have been through 
discovering your passions and really working mm -hmm. from that space. So what you're describing, I really think is the first step. It really starts there. Yeah. What I do see though, is that most people think of creating offerings first. Like I'm going to do a class package or a workshop series or a course. Why is this a mistake? And, um, well, let's start with that question. Yeah. Why is this a mistake? Yeah. Well, it's actually, and you'll know this, Annie, it's actually yeah. the mistake I made. Yeah. You know, when I first started my business, I was exactly the same. You know, I, I wanted to create an online course for yoga teachers. And that particular course was on how to build a yoga website. And I spent, you know, weeks, maybe months really working on that, pulling all the content together. I was so excited about creating my first offering. And of course, I put it out there. But I hadn't done the work to focus to build up the community. Yeah. So, you know, I had it on my website and then I started kind of promoting it and, you know, trying to build a community up around it. So I had these big expectations that, you know, I was going to put it out there and it was going to sell and all the yoga teachers would come flooding to it. But of course, it doesn't work like that. You know, there's a whole process that you need to go through to actually build your community, but also nurture those people in your community in mm -hmm. order for them to trust you and in order that for them to, you know, part with their money. So, um, yeah, it's, of course, it's great to have ideas. It's definitely great mm -hmm. to experiment with things, you know, start putting workshops out there, start experimenting and putting offerings out there as you're building, but your focus really is you know how to actually build up that community around you and start building those relationships mm -hmm. so if that's the focus how do you do that then because i think that's where most people get stuck right yeah of course so um when you've started to do the work on you know who it is that you actually want to serve then you can start to get a sense of what are the topic areas that those people are interested in? Mm -hmm. You know, so what is it? What are the what are the problems they're facing? What are the desires that they have? You know, what are they actually what do they actually want for their life? You know, where are they wanting to head to towards? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What are the emotions that they're going through? You know, what is the, What is the mindset that they have? What are the mindset challenges that they have? You know, mm -hmm. is it imposter syndrome? Is it confidence? Is it, you know, what limiting beliefs do they have? And so starting to really kind of dive into this and to understand the the issues or the topics that somebody might be interested in you know perhaps they're starting to get their own they're starting to build up their own awareness around something that's happening in their lives right now so let's say someone has gone through I don't know a breakup or something like that you know what are the things that they that's going on in their minds that's causing them to open the laptop and to start searching for things on on google you know what are those keywords essentially understanding this and starting to know this is going to give you you know it's going to give you that ammunition because you now know what you can create content around mm -hmm. you know once you start once you start to know the answers to that and of course you're not going to know it's not going to be set in stone you know it's about coming up with some ideas to test and to create some content around and to start putting yourself out there on these amazing platforms that we have available and to see what feedback you're getting, what engagement you're getting. And so that can really kind of just kickstart this process because one of the key issues that I see teachers having, and I would say most business owners, to be quite honest with you, but one of the key issues is that they get stuck with content. Mm -hmm. yeah they get stuck so they don't know they come to like content creation day and they sit down and it's like oh what am I create? what have I got to write about today I don't I don't know what I'm going to create today or, you know or it's you know it's this case of you know when it comes to Instagram we get to like Friday morning it's like oh my gosh I've not posted anything all week what am I going to post and then getting in a right kind of getting really overwhelmed and stressed out about it you can stop all of that that stress and that overwhelm if you've done or at least started the niche work, you know, mm -hmm. that's why we start there. It influences, it impacts on everything that you do. And so 
your content, of course, and content comes in lots of many different forms. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about what you're putting out on social media. You know, it's also the freebies that you create, you know, to grow your email list. It's also, um, you know, the maybe blog posts that you write, or perhaps you're going to do a podcast, or it's content that you do with um, you know, a partner that you collaborate with to create some content. What we're doing right now is content, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really about, you know, knowing what your specialities are that you want to show up in the online space to talk about and to share. And so when you know that, you can then start creating content for lots of different platforms. And so, um, you know, this is one of the, this is how you, this is how you build your community, essentially. It's you showing up, being visible, sharing what you're passionate about, sharing what you're knowledgeable about. You know, many teachers believe, they have this limiting belief that they are not expert enough to show up in this space. If you've been through something yourself, if you've experienced something, or if you've been taught something, you are expert enough to show up in your space and share on that. 100%, you know? And so it's really about being sold on what you have to offer, having belief in yourself that you can actually help people. Mm -hmm. And of course, that involves, you know, in the beginning, get, get moving through your comfort zone. <laughs> but that's why we're entrepreneurs. You know, as entrepreneurs, we must move through our comfort zone because if we don't, we stay stuck. We're never going to move forward, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to do this and you have to make all of those fears and those limiting beliefs much, much bigger. You have to make your message, what you want to share much bigger than all of that, you know, because remember, we go back to our purpose. We go back to why we're doing this in the first place is to help people, isn't it? You know, and the world needs that right now. Okay. We could all agree on that one. So it's to help people. It's to create impact. So we have to move through those fears. You know, it just has to happen. We have to keep working at that. And of course, content showing up in this online space can be one of the scariest things that we do, you know, in the beginning, practice, 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 practice. You know, when I first started doing this, I was scared, you know, we all are, but the more we do it, the more comfortable we feel, the more we step into our authentic voice and our, our space and who we are, and we're not afraid to share anymore. So it's just a process that we have to go on. Um, but yeah, going back to your, your question about how do we build this community? It really is about, it is about the content that we're sharing showing up in the space online on social collaborating building your network growing your email list mm. we can talk about that a bit more <laughs> bit. i could talk about that one for days <laughs> i know i know and it's so important i think it was one of the other interviews and i'm very sure that you've mentioned it in your your weekly lives or maybe even your emails as well that it's so important to have that visible visibility on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever it is. Mm. But more importantly, to have your email list. Because mm. I think it was a year ago or two years ago when Facebook or Instagram decided to just shut down and we were not able to use it for like 48 hours. Yeah, that's right. And it was a real scare for everyone because we've built everything on, on social media and now lost all our clients, all students or potential people we could work with. So your email list is super important. Tell us about it. Yes, it is. And yeah, we did, that did happen. And I mean, it's happened, it's happened many times, you know, when there's been an outage on Facebook or Instagram and it just shows, you know, it can happen. And so if you are, solely focusing on growing your community on Instagram and Facebook or TikTok or wherever it might be, YouTube, it's a mistake. You know, mm -hmm. that is a mistake to make. We don't want to be doing that one. You know, of course you need to be there. Of course you do. But ultimately you need to find a way to grow your email list. Okay. And there's many ways you can do that. But once you do it, once you have a funnel, a simple email funnel set up you know you now have someone in your space you know you you are building your email list you own that you know you don't own your facebook account you don't own your instagram profile 
those can actually be can be shut down, right? They can mm -hmm. be shut down, you know, and sometimes you don't even know why you've been shut down or, you know, you might not be able to go live or something is happening mm -hmm. with your, your profile. So, <clears throat> you know, I think, <clears throat> of course, it's important. It definitely has a place, but more importantly is you focusing and being intentional about how you grow your own email list and when you do that you can show up in someone's inbox you know you're there you're not competing with an Instagram feed where let's face it we know that when we open Instagram we see the same profiles right you might be following thousands of people but you see the same ones over and over again so that's the algorithm really just working there and you know with with email marketing you have the opportunity to show up in someone's inbox every single week. You know, if you're consistent with this, and especially if you are creating content every week, which is what I teach my students, the yoga teachers that come into my programs here at Digital Yoga Academy, you know, I teach a, a process for repurposing mm -hmm. that makes content easier right? It makes it easier. It doesn't become this whole big thing that takes up the whole week. It's about creating one piece of content and looking at how you repurpose it across different platforms. And when you have an easier way to create content, you can be more consistent. So you can share, create and share a piece of new content every week, which mm -hmm. means you have something to share with your email list. So gone is the excuse of I don't know what to send my email list this week. Mm -hmm. You know, that excuse no longer exists because we've spent the time creating our weekly content. So we have something to share with them. And so you can show up every single week in their inbox, even if they don't open your email, they're seeing your name. Now they don't necessarily see that when they open Instagram or when they open Facebook. So you're there every week consistently. You know, when they're thinking about, you know, they need some support. Let's say you're a fertility yoga teacher. Let's say, say they're going through fertility treatment and they need some support. They're going to think of you, you know, because they're like, oh, OK, I've seen that name. I know what she's about, you know, or maybe they want to book a yoga retreat. They are going to think of you. So, <clears throat> you know, there's many, many, many reasons why we want to create or build our email list, but ultimately it's allowing you to have a touch point into your business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So versus someone maybe, maybe discovering you through a hashtag, let's say an Instagram, go, looking at your video or your reel that's popped up in their feed. Let's say if you've been, you know, you're in the real discovery feed, let's say you pop up there, they can watch it and you just scroll by never to be seen again. You know, now you have a touch point where you've created a freebie, a free piece of valuable content that is niche specific. Okay. It's speaking on one of those topics that you've identified that your people are interested in and they want that the piece of content. They want that freebie. It's not just a, you know, a morning yoga class that could be for everyone. This is something that they have actively and intentionally given you their email address for right? That's an exchange that's gone on there. And so now you have an opportunity. And if you don't show up in their inbox each week, you're doing them a disservice because they've given you their email address, which means they've act actively saying, I want to hear from you. And you're doing yourself a disservice as well, because you've gone to all the effort of creating that freebie only to never show up in their inbox again. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So, you know, once you've done this and you're now in their inbox, you have an opportunity to build that relationship with them, to show to them that you are the teacher for them, that you can support them and help them on the journey that they're going on and that you understand them and likely that you've been through this journey yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it's so powerful in that sense, in that it allows you to build this relationship to keep providing content to them on a weekly basis and when you have something to sell that transition to make that sale is so much easier you know mm. versus just sticking a, a sponsored ad up and serving it to someone who's never heard of you before you know, showing up in their feed is just not going to cut it. Like that just doesn't happen. Think of your own behavior, right? Do you pay money to someone that you've just seen in your Instagram feed for the very first time trying to sell you something? Likely no. So 
if there's any advice I can give to you today, those of you watching today, and hello to everyone in the Facebook group, I can see you there, um, is do this, get your freebie created, get yourself, you know, get your some, some automated email set up and start building your email list, okay? Super, super important. You know, if you want to build an online community, essential you have an email list mm -hmm. exactly exactly i'm just going to quickly go through the comments because i think there are some questions about this <laughs> see eddie is here it's great to see you um reinvent that the bay says reinvent i'm not sure what she's talking about anymore but pretty sure it will align with let's see all right, so if anyone is watching and you have questions, write them down in the comments. We're here to answer them. Um, let me see, I've got, did I? Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, let me see, do I have any other questions? Because I think you've been so clear on everything and just give so much detail. Um, we spoke about the niche and doing your inner work, yeah. finding like what it is that really lights you up, your, what you're passionate about and what you can help people with, how you can serve them best. Then creating your content and building your community and obviously yeah. getting your email list up and running. Is there anything that you would like to add to this or any recommendations for international teachers? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, you have a real opportunity to just go, if we're talking specifically about being online, okay? Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity as a yoga teacher to really create something that's meaningful and that allows you to go on a deeper journey with your students. And that's not necessarily just focusing on you know, your Zoom classes and your Zoom schedule. So really look at, and it will develop over time. You know, mm -hmm. it will develop over time. You'll probably start with your Zoom classes and schedule. That's totally fine. I'm not saying don't have that, but mm -hmm. what else can you do? Because the beauty of the online space, like one of the major benefits of this is that, yes, you can reach people all around the world, but you're not limited to capacity. Like you're not limited to the four walls of a studio and being able to just fit 10 mats in a space you now have like literally lifted the ceiling on what's possible in terms of the numbers of people that you can teach and 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 support and so you know as you start to build your community know that anything is possible with this it really mm -hmm. is it really really is and so you know it's not just about having a zoom schedule because actually you're in danger of replicating what happens in the studio setup. And that is, you know, yoga teachers who are rushing around town. Okay, maybe you're not doing that in Zoom, but you're rushing around town to different studios, teaching 15, 20 classes a week. And now, and we saw this in, in you know, in COVID, teachers literally yeah. replicating that, but doing the same in Zoom and yeah. setting up a schedule of like 15 classes on Zoom and not being able to fill them all and feeling exhausted because they're showing up to teach one person. So, you know, what we want to do really is focus on how can I take my students on a journey with me? And you know, what does that look like? Does it look like a series of workshops? Does it look like a, an online membership where I can support them on a monthly basis with new content? Does it look like an online course or a, you know, a, a kind of small group program? What does that look like that allows me to create something that I can put my life's work into and really create something of value? And it also allows my students to go through this transition from point A, where they're feeling really stuck to point B, which is that desire and where they want to be in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for those of you who are going on this um, journey of building an online business, know that that's what the future can look like. You know, know that that is where you start to scale your business is where you start to really 
build a profitable yoga business. And that gives you that freedom to be able to travel around the world, to be able to, you know, hop on a plane and go and teach at a festival in another country, to be able to do these things because you're not dependent on the location of, I have to be teaching in these studios, you know, I have to be teaching in that community hall at this certain day and time gives you that freedom to allow you to be the international yoga teacher that you want to be Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely amazing really 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 amazing um I don't think I see any questions coming in and um I I mean I do have one more thing I'd love to share with you guys yes go for it (laughs) it's really about mindset you know it's really about um and I touched on it earlier, but, you know, moving through that comfort zone. And one of the things that I see time and time again is, is teachers giving up too, too quick. Yeah. You know, they put some content out there and they didn't get 10 likes. And then, so it's a disaster and it's a failure. And, you know, as a entrepreneur as a business owner which is what you are you know if you've if you've done your teach training and you're here especially if you're here in this group if you're watching this now you're here because you want something more than simply teaching in studios you're here Mm -hmm. because you want to build something and I'm never going to be here and say to you this is easy you know follow this framework that's all you need to do and you'll get all the results and you'll make six figures in a week I'm never going to say that to you (laughs) you know if someone's saying that to you turn away because that you don't want to be listening to that type of advice it's setting you up for you know disappointment ultimately the one key thing that you really need to embody and to dig deep on is grit you know it's is mm-hmm. that commitment to your purpose and to fulfilling what it is that you set out to achieve in the first place why you beget became a yoga teacher in the first place what it is what is it that's getting you out of bed in the morning you know connecting to that on a daily basis is what's going to help you to keep showing up because it is a challenge you know you're going to it's an up and down journey you know it's never going to be just linear it's up and down and on those days where you're having a down day you know connecting to your heart is is what's going to pick you back up again connect with your community you know when I have those down days and I'm like okay get onto Instagram let's do a live you know connect with your community engage with them because that's why you're doing this in the first place but it really does take persistence and consistency you know if I can give you any advice around the the mindset that you really need to cultivate it's that you know find your grit find your grit to keep moving forward and to keep making the impact that you're that you're here ultimately to create Mm -hmm. exactly this is really really great and I'm so grateful for you sharing your knowledge your expertise I want to remind people that that don't know you already to listen to your podcast because this is one of the things that really, really helped me um, building my business. Even when I was working with you already on the course, it is also really motivational just to keep hearing things on repeat and be reminded of how to put your message out, when to create content, how to do all of those things. But you've got many resources. Where else can we find you? What do you have for people? Yeah, so definitely tune into the Yogipreneur podcast, as Annie said. Um, there's an episode every single week, so you can listen to me on the go. Um, and then if you go to digitalyogaacademy.com, we have a number of resources there. We have a marketing blueprint which gives you seven steps to help you to get started. And there's also a yogipreneur quiz. So you can find out what quiz, what yogipreneur you are. And there's a number of videos and resources there as well. Um, join me in our Facebook group on Instagram every Wednesday. I do a live training there. And yeah, just get yourself in these communities. You know, you're in a community already with Annie. Annie is a fantastic guide and leader. So Mm -hmm. you are in safe hands here with her, but get into these communities and be around other yogipreneurs who are going through this journey with you. Because let's face it, you know, it can be very lonely Mm -hmm. building your yoga business. So it's super important to feel supported, um, you know, by leaders such as Annie and also by other yoga teachers who are showing up to, to do this work as well. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The community, the community is so important and really it makes such a difference when you're on this journey. Kelly, thank you so much for being here and sharing your knowledge, your wisdom, your expertise with us. Like I said, I'm really grateful to be starting on the summit with you here today. I'm so happy <laughs> and so proud of you, Annie, for what you're yeah. doing. Keep sharing your gifts with everybody. And yeah, sending everyone so much love. Enjoy the summit, everybody. And if you want to get in touch, send me a DM on Instagram. I'd love to chat with you. But well done, everyone, for being here. And well done, you, Annie, as well so proud of you lovely thank mm -hmm. you thank you so much so for those that are watching and those as well watching the replay don't forget to introduce yourself upload a video to tell us where you live and your aim of joining the summit so why you're really here and i hope to see you all tomorrow for our next interview with gwen and we're going to speak about business as well so come back then, it's at 10 a.m. CST, so Central European time. And we'll be uh, posting the schedule in the Facebook group and per email, you'll receive all the details. We'll see you all then. Perfect, bye. Bye. bye.